Hi, this is Chris Rosencutter with Mecha Enterprises. This video is a quick overview of the major additions to Mecha Stack. As you can see, the most obvious thing is the graphics. You've got 3D graphics that you can you can rotate um, and zoom in. You can save the image to a file. You can say export it to a, a solid model to import into a CAD package. Uh, you can turn things off and on. Um, you've got some control over the uh, dimensions, the locations of dimensions. You can click and drag things. Um, quite a few new things. Um, the file menu, you've now got a history list that saves your recent access files. Uh, we've got a couple of new additions in the design codes. Not codes themselves, but options within the design codes on the STS screen. There, are, There's a an option to disable minimum thickness and stiffening ring checks and the uh, variable diameter criteria for vortex shedding you've got an option for that now in the uh, in the custom uh, codes in the long wind you have ASC 710 now uh, we've got big changes load combinations now you can actually specify those manually um, or you can uh, use the default. You can save a combination to a file or load it so you can share uh, combinations on future projects. If you've got one specification that's set up a certain way then you can save that and use it in the future. Uh, we've got the ability to specify a reference elevation at the base that's non-zero um, and then decide whether you want to use zero as your base or whatever the elevation is that you enter as for example for a plant that has a non-zero uh, value for grade. Uh, we've got a couple of different options in the damping menu. You can specify a mass damper or a damping pad now. Um, doesn't design the pads themselves or the m mass damper but uh, it lets you take the the weight and the wind area into consideration. Um, let me go back and fix that. Okay, we've got a live load entry now. That's for the platforms. Um, your boundary conditions, you've got some more input over how the stack is supported and you can enter supports at different elevations and control the, uh, the restraints that you use. In the attachments, uh, there's Platforms has a little more input now where you need to enter a start angle and an end angle since we're actually drawing the platform on the screen. Um, we need to know where it starts and ends. And then there's an option down here that automatically generates ladders and platforms. Based, basically a platform at the top elevation that you enter and uh, rest platforms every 30 feet and it'll automatically stagger those as you're going down the stack. Just a nice feature. Uh, piping now, you can specify the top and the bottom elevation for the piping. That's new. Uh, general attachments, we've always had this for the uniform attachment, but now we've added one for concentrated. And you can actually specify just a point mass uh, at a location. And then all of the attachment screens now, you can specify what the load case is that they're attached to. Um, the external point loads have just moved. They used to be in the design menu, now they're over here in attachments. Uh, details are pretty similar, but now we have a, a drawing, or a model rather, 3D model of the, the part, and it's just like the main screen. You can turn layers off and on. Um, you can print or save that view. Uh, in that view to give uh, front view to give your thicknesses the top view gives all your other dimensions so you can print that you can print a uh, a copy of your actual form to use that to convey the information to whoever's drawing the stack several of the detail forms have that option now Okay, so that's the main input differences. Now when you run it, you're going to see a lot of differences. Here you've got some options now to select what you display in the output. You can select how many modes you consider and whether it's a linear or a P-delta analysis. 
uh, guide stacks are always going to be a P-delta nonlinear analysis. The self-support stacks will be linear. The P-delta option for self-supported stacks is only available if you have the guy option. So we do an analysis and then you'll see there's a lot more uh, options over here. You now actually have a table of contents that you can click on to navigate through the file more easily. Anything that's black is just a calculation. Um, anything red is means that you have at least one failure in that section and anything green means that everything's passing in that section. So you can quickly scan and see where you have failures and where everything's okay. That's when we've got a few areas we would need to work on. Once you get the final product done, you can pick and choose what you print in the final output by clicking on these check boxes. So I'm going to click check summary and anything that has the word summary in the description uh, is going to be printed in the final output. And then you generate the output report and you actually see which of those items, all those items that we selected are actually included in the final output report. And then you can save it to a file or you can print it. Uh, one more thing is the... Another big change is the lifting analysis. You've got several more parameters that you can enter here. Um, you, you specify the location for the tailing lug. Um, you specify the safety factor that we're using, any deflection limit um, between the lift points and the cantilever and then also how many angles you're going to check the final the, the lift at whether it's just 0 90 or 0 45 and 90 or in this case I picked every 10 degrees um, and it goes through and checks the stack at each of those angles and it tells you where you have issues and in this one we have a few issues and then the output is basically the same for you select what you want to print and you only have to, to print those items um, the output for the overall stack analysis, there's a lot of changes within the calculations, probably more, more than I can go into here, but um, we're now using load combinations, and so you can specify the primary loads, and then the load combinations in all the cases are written in terms of the load number, so like load number 9, and that is the wind combination hot with no live load. Um, and the whole output is geared around that. The detailed components, like base plate for example, is only checked for the worst case loads. It's not checked for every load like it used to be. So it makes for a more efficient output. So in a nutshell, that those, those are the major changes from StackDiz to MechaStack. Um, thank you for your time.